be careful you that you want to love this morning. Amen. Amen. If we would have put this all on and his hands off you, we would have woke up this morning. And that right like there let you know that God killed every last one of us this year because we are alive and well. Amen. Come on and give God another hand clap of praise.
I know I have been in some battles, and I know I'm not by myself, that he will fight your battle. If you keep still, he won't fight you, you trying to fight him too. I'm ready to know that Jesus will. Amen. Now, I can't feel your black hand, but I can feel my black hand. But I know Jesus will do everything for me. Amen. 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 Can we give God a big old hand now for praise? Amen. Amen. Now, in rehearsal, we thought about first lady. We also thought about pastor, but we thought about first lady. And uh, we thought about how she used to sing her favorite song. Uh -huh. Hey man, we're not gonna make you sing, we're not gonna let you sing it, let you want to. <laughs> but, but we're gonna sing it for you today, alright? Alright, can we do it for our first lady?
Sunday, which will be the first Sunday of May, this past year's life anniversary. And we're asking each member to donate $60 for this, this occasion. I realize that the first Sunday comes before the third, which is a critical date for some of you. But if you will make your donations on the second Sunday or to give a buy, I will make sure the pastor still gets the money. $60 is not a lot when you consider all that the pastor and the first lady do for us. Whenever someone is going through a problem, if you're dealing with sickness, loss of a loved one, someone missing, whatever it is, you're constantly calling on our prayer warriors to pray for us. Therefore, I think that we have an obligation to take care of the people who pray for our souls. I'm asking each one of you to please contribute so that we can make this a glorious occasion for our pastor and first lady. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I was going to have Stacey to do one song for me, but amen. But she blessed my spirit with those songs that she sung. The song of simply said that, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season.
And then he was suffering under honor. Amen. He was being he's on the battlefield sacrificing. Amen. When we are in our comfort of our home, he says, surely and protect us, praying and asking God to watch over us. Amen. 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 They deserve it. They deserve it. Bless the Lord. Amen. Certainly. Amen. I thank God for my own wife who's here. Amen. I tell you, amen, she's quiet, but she's been going through, amen, but look at God, look at her now, she's a walking testimony, amen, she's a walking, you, you ain't got to get happy, I can get happy, you know what, as Pastor Chicken said last week, that's mine, ah, she want to hear y'all, she want to hear, and I can get happy, you don't have to get happy, amen, when she was down and out, God bless her, amen. And so I'm quite sure some of you understand what it feels like to be down. Amen. Amen. When God lift you back. Amen. 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 You put one in your hand. Amen. Tap it in your hand. And you put joy in your mouth. Yeah. Amen. But look at God. Yeah. Amen. I thank God for her. I thank God for all these preachers. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All these missionaries. Amen. Whoever well, you may be in the house of God, I thank God for you. Amen. Amen. It's just a blessing to be in the house of God one more time. One more time. Amen. 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 Look at these musicians. Amen. 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 I tell you, these guys be praying. Amen. 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 I tell you what, the more you praise them, I guess what? The what? The more they'll play. Huh? They love to play. Amen. So I thank God. Amen. For all these deacons. Amen. But we're not here to. Amen. But just to magnify and give God the praise. Amen. Amen. So if you don't mind, if you would go with me to the very familiar book. Amen. According to the Gospel of John, chapter 11. Amen. John, chapter 11. Amen. We do not take the word of God lightly. Amen. Just because you done read something, amen, it does not mean that you know the way that God's going to go. Amen. amen. Don't, don't, don't block it out because you done read the scripture. You done read it a thousand times. You've been in this church. You've been in other church, and you done heard it preach. Amen. But nobody knows the mindset of God. Amen. So with John chapter 11, amen, we're going to read one verse. Verse 3. Amen. You. I know we are in a pandemic time, and according to the television, that 3.1 million people have died from the COVID. And when you keep on and look how the world is, The text says that uh, 
dealing with Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Uh, everybody know this story now, how Jesus loved Lazarus and how uh, he had became so acquainted with them until uh, when they sent for Jesus, they said, whom thou loveth? Huh? Is sick. And just in case if you don't feel like you love, it's recorded in the word of God that for God so loved the world. Yeah, you don't have to get happy there because I understand how Martha and Mary felt because now I know that it was Jesus' love that put him on the cross. In this text, I, I like it because the way John is, John is different from the rest of the gospel. Uh -huh. When you read the book of Matthew, you'll find that Matthew started out with coming on the scene that talking about the virgin birth. Uh -huh. And when you read Mark, you find Mark talked about that about the suffering servant of yes. Jesus is. Uh -huh. And but when you read the book of Luke, Luke just like Matthew, Luke jump on the scene talking about the birth of Jesus. Uh -huh. But just like John, John is not like Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But when John showed up on the scene, John said in the beginning. John said in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. But when I walk about John didn't stop there. John said and, and we and the word became flesh and dwell among us. Do anybody really just need the Lord today? Do you know somebody that needs the Lord? When we come to church, when we come to the house of worship, we got to set our mind on nothing but praising and magnifying and lifting up the name of God. That's the only purpose we should be here is to give God all the glory. And it does not have a shape, fashion, or form, but when you enter into the worship, though, you ought to come in with a faith given on your heart. You ought to come in with a praise on your mind. Tell God, I thank you. I made another week. I made it another week, God. And everybody knows the ministry of Jesus. How Jesus began to show up in John chapter 1. How he began to declare who he was. But what I like about Jesus and in his ministry and how to write to put it, the writing began to let us know how Jesus operated. I'm so glad that he left it on record where I can read it for myself because when I look in John chapter 2, I find Jesus at a wedding feast. Giving me, giving me the idea that whatsoever I ask him, he'll do. But when I look at chapter 3 of John, I find Jesus making a statement talking to who? Nicodemus. Huh? And let me know that it doesn't matter what position, what status you hold in life, Jesus will come down on your own. You are not too high for Jesus. I like the way Jesus did it. In John, they talked about it in chapter 4. That when he met a woman uh, at the well, a Samaritan woman, that I like the way the Bible put it. Let me know that it doesn't matter what color I am, it doesn't matter how I look, whether I'm tall, whether I'm short, whether I'm fat, whether I'm skinny, Jesus still would talk to me. Oh, bless his name. I like John because John talks about it and, and when he gets to chapter 5 there was a man at the pool of Bethesda. I like the way the Bible put it. It says the man was there for 38 years. I know some of y'all been having some affliction. You wait, for, you wait on God to leave you. You wait on God to take it away. I only been in it one week. God, God, I want you to move the same right now. But the man that said at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years and said, I have nobody when the water is troubled. And I don't feel like that. Don't nobody care about your problem. People walk over you. They talk about you. But guess what? Along came Jesus. Along came Jesus. 
when you thought the world was against you, Jesus will show up right on time. When you feel like there's no hope, Jesus will show up right on time. But I like what the Bible put it, but in John 6, it talks about how he took two fish and then five loaves of bread and fed the multitude. We ain't talking about the man in the church, but and let you know that if you're down and you're out and you don't have food on your table, Jesus got a way to provide for you. He's a way I like John because John talks about it in John 7. He lets us know that. He said, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I beg you to get a mindset where you trust him and you believe him. Watch God begin to overshadow you. Watch God begin to cause something to brew up on the inside of you. But you just can't hold your peace. I know you're thinking after running, ain't nobody behind you. You'll start crying, ain't nobody messing with you. You'll, oh, y'all ain't never been there yet. Y'all ain't never just got overexcited about the word of God. Y'all ain't never had the word to get pregnant you where you begin to lift his hand, you lift your hands in the air. When then you just run down the road. You don't know why your hands go up and lift it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I like John because John talks about it in chapter 8. He said there was a woman that was taken in adultery. Uh, when you feel like that, when the other people want to cast you out and want to get rid of you because of your sin and they don't want to acknowledge their sin, and you got to watch out for people like that. That's why I'm glad that Jesus came down my road. So when I sin, I ain't worried about you forgiving me, but I got a God that will. John talks about it in John 9. There was a man that was blind. See, the one thing about the Bible that I understand is that uh, the Bible will come down in your room if you read it. That's what I like about the Bible. The Bible teaches me that all things in the Bible was written for our example. Yeah, so if you want to find out what you're going through, you find it in the Bible and find out the outcome. Yeah, the outcome is in the Bible as well as what you're going through is in the Bible. So if you want to know the in your situation, it's in the word. John 9 talks about it because there was a man that was born blind. Yeah, I know there's some situation where you feel that you were born one way, and, you, and just because you were born that way, you think you got to die that way. How do you know that it ain't like that with God? Yeah, he can fix any situation that you're going through. It doesn't matter what the doctor has said. One thing I know about God is that he specializes in miracles. And if you want to do anything in this life that, that you feel that there's no hope, I beg you to really trust Jesus. I beg you to cast it in his hand and watch God begin to move on your behalf. But Jesus will come on the scene and talks about it in John chapter 10 where he said, I am the good shepherd. Hmm? I mean, if you're my sheep, I'm, I'm going to tend to you. I'm going to watch over you. I'm going to be just like David said in Psalm chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He's the good shepherd. But the first I want to get to was chapter 11 when we find Jesus and Lazarus. And the Bible says now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Uh, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with the, the ornaments. Anybody familiar with that text over in chapter Luke and Luke chapter 9? When, when Mary came in when Jesus was preaching, and the Bible says she had an uh, alabaster box filled with ornament and she break it. Anybody feel like anybody just came to Jesus and poured out every problem that you had, every situation that you have ever faced in this life, and you just came to Jesus and, and just poured it all out? That's all God wants you to do. He just wants you to come before his presence and just empty yourself. Whatever you're going through in this life, God wants you to just empty yourself. But notice the text. I'm familiar with this text. There's a lot of stories in the Bible that I, I could have related to this text. Come on, Lord, we need you. Uh -huh. 
We need you, Lord, with all this sickness going on, with all this killing that is going on, the struggle on every side. It seems like every which way you turn, you're always getting bad news. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kind of remind me of Job. Of Job was one of the book of Job. The Bible said, well, every time Job got some bad news, there was somebody else standing in line ready to give him some more bad news. But I thank God for Jesus that no matter what I go through in this life, that I'm not going to allow it to shake me, shake my faith, shake what I believe, because I know that I serve God that is able. Yeah. I'm reminded of a story over in the book of Corona, which when it was Jehoshaphat. And when Jehoshaphat had gotten news that the Moab and Ammon and Mount Seir was going to come up against them. But then he, began, he began to fear, but yet the thing that he did was he found himself praying and talking to God. How you know that there's a situation that will make you get on your knees? It'll make you call upon God. It'll make you lift your hand when you realize that the enemy comes to attack you. The Bible said Jehoshaphat began to pray to God, call upon God. The children, people all around, when they realized that life had been threatened. Some of you won't even pray until you realize that you find yourself going through something in life. But I dare you to send up some temple even before any bad situation ever occurred in your life. I dare you get your prayer life where you talk to God in the morning, you talk to God in the noonday, and you talk to God at night. So when trouble comes, God will always be ready to provide. This day in time, we know we're fulfilling the Bible where it says in the last day, people should wax cold and cold, worse and worse. We're seeing it right now. If we don't grow up ourselves and begin to operate the way that God called us to operate, the devil is going to sip us as we Because I understand the devil don't care about you going to church. He don't care about you going to Bible study. He don't care about you singing in the choir. He don't care about those things. All he don't want you to do is be all right. You can do whatever you want to do in the church as long as you give him his time. But when you make up in your mind and say, for God I live and for God I die. The Bible says your husband began to pray because he needed help. Because he needed help right then. You never thought about sometimes when you know you need help right then, you ain't got time for a long prayer. You don't have time for a real long prayer, but you need God and you need him right then. The Bible said, Jehoshaphat fell into this position with God. When he got the news, and one thing about news, news can cause you to act a certain way. Bad news if you're a Christian call you to draw closer to God. The Bible said, Jehoshaphat began to pray to God, and, and he wanted God to avenge his adversary. He had to remind God, these same people that you told me not to Destroy God. These are the people that are coming upon me. My Lord, my Lord. How many know that God take it personal when the enemy mess with one of the heels? How many know that God take it personal when the enemy mess with one of the heels? When you know you belong to God, God take it personal. If you don't believe me, go there and read in the book of Acts chapter 7. When the Bible said, and when Stephen began to be stoned, yeah. called Jesus to stand up and look down. Yeah. Some of y'all are in some situation right now that where Jesus is standing up. I know the Bible said he went to glory to sit on the right hand of God, but your situation right now got Jesus 
of all his feet. Your situation got Jesus standing up, looking down, shaking his head. Do you and I know that because the Bible takes me that we have not in high priest who cannot be touched with our infirmity, but in all point he was tempted just like us, but sin not. Oh, bless his name. Lord, we need you. Just like Jehoshaphat needed you. Just like Job needed you. Just like Jairus daughter needed you. God, we need you. The Bible said when God began to speak, he didn't speak to Jehoshaphat. Even though it was Jehoshaphat that called the prayer. And God looked over and saw a priest by the name of Jehazel. Uh -huh. And the Bible said, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. Then he began to tell, he said, now here Judah in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Stand still for the Lord shall fight for you. Okay. There are some situations that you want to put your hands on. There are some situations that want to make you throw a towel in. But I tell you to stand still and allow God to fight your battle. Allow your situation to put you in the presence of God. Uh -huh. Not to run from God, uh -huh. but to run to God. Uh -huh. The Bible says when God told uh, Jehazel what to do, that get you some people that know how to sing. Get you some people that don't mind lifting their voice up. Yeah, you, you ain't gonna be there to fight, but just get the, line the people up, set yourself in an array. Oh, when you get, get prepared for what people don't understand a lot of times when God tells you to get yourself ready and put the people in line, not that you're going to fight, but that you may go and collect the blessing. Because the Bible said that when, when, when uh, the Jews got ready to go fight, that when they got to the fight, God had fixed it where the enemy had cut each other head off. And all the children of Israel had to do is go in and pick up all the spoil. The necklace, the bracelets. They have to do everything. God is what you to get yourself in a position to get your blessing. Yeah. Uh -huh. He just wants you in a position. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not fight, but to get your blessing. Stand still. This battle ain't even on yours. But in this text that I had to read in John chapter 11, when Jesus got the news of what was going on, he had to tell the disciples, this sickness is not unto you, death. Some of y'all going through things right now and you think they're going to take you out. But God had already decided that this sickness is not unto death. And what I like about God, he'll wait sometimes to they get documented. He'll allow them to put it on you let the world know what's going on. All your friends will know what's going on. Everybody in your community knows what's going on. You're allowed to happen. So when he bless you and heal you, then everybody will know that it was nobody but God. Well, he'll wait till you get documented. He'll wait till the world knows. Just so that he can get all the glory. Yes, Lord. That's all God wants. He wants all the glory out of yes. your situation. Yes, he just waiting for you to totally surrender to him. Mm -hmm. He's not messed up about your problem. He's not messed up about your sickness. He's just waiting on you to yield. Many of you have not yielded yet because that's when you're still in situations because God just waiting on you. The Bible tells me he is not them to let them even call upon his name. He's just waiting on you. Touch your neighbor, he's waiting on you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God is just waiting on you. The text said that Jesus waited. Yes, sir. 
I know some of you can attest to that. Long as you've been going through. Jesus just waiting. Jesus just waiting. Don't throw away the time. I like the way Mary Martha did. They sent for Jesus. Many of y'all are going through situations now. You ain't even called his name. You ain't even lift your hands up. You ain't even magnify him. You have not even worshipped him. He went to heal and deliver you. He's waiting on you. The Bible says that. Mary and Martha in the waiting on Jesus. Jesus said, now we're getting ready to go. My servant Lazarus is sleeping. And the disciples said, Lord, if you're sleeping, he do it well. But Jesus don't want to talk about this type of sleep. Jesus has to let him know. Lazarus is dead. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. He's dead. Yes, sir. Now let us go. And the first thing that happened when Jesus showed up on the scene, the Bible said, one of the sisters ran out to him. And the first thing she did was fell down and worship him. See, when you want something for God, you got to go to a place and worship him. Let him know about his attributes. Let him know the God that he is. Talk about how sweet he is. Talk about what he said. And watch you begin to get the attention of God. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. We're going to need this in the future. Yes, sir. Because there's going to come a time when we ain't going to know how to pray. Uh-huh. When the devil going to hit you so hard until he will make you forget the words of God. There's some situations that if a phone call you're going to get in the middle of the night, they're going to always want to make you let go. Uh-huh. And it's very behooving that you get the word of God on the inside. Because Jesus has already warned us that, say, in this world you're going to have trials and tribulations. Uh-huh. You're going to have trials and tribulations. You hear me when I say that? Because it's on the way. It's already here. We have not seen anything yet. Y'all better get ready. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. But y'all better get ready. We better get ready. The enemy is loose. Seeking whom he may defy. And to destroy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got off course. I'm supposed to be going. But well, praise God. See, I like this story because the story talks about Martha and Mary, and it lets me know that no matter what situation you in, that how God will come to your rescue, but He may not come when you want. He may not come when you want, but guess what? He's always right on time. It'll make you say, like Mary said, Lord, if I had a video, uh-huh. if I ever felt like that, well. when sickness invades your body, Lord, if you have not been here, uh-huh. my brother would have died, my mother would have died, my sister would have died. Only if you had a shoulder, well. they will see a me. Uh-huh. But I like what Jesus said, man. And she began to talk to Jesus. She said, Jesus said again, he your brother should live again. He said, she said, I know he should live, but in the resurrection, Jesus had to let him know, I am the resurrection. He that believed in me, though he was dead, yet shall he live. I got power over death. Mm. Go ahead, dog. Go ahead. Don't worry, I got this. I'm in charge of death. Death has to listen to me. That's why I always stop by and say, those that are weary, those that have lost loved ones, don't worry about it. God left it on record that to be absent. 
free from the body is to be present with God. I'm so glad that God knew that we needed his help until Jesus and God had a conversation when Jesus said, Lord, if my offering is sacrifice, thou has no pleasure. But God, if you just get me a body ready, I'll go around and redeem man back to you. Because Jesus knew that it was time that the people had been crying out to God. That God knew that the people needed a salvation. And Jesus said, Lord, I come in the volume of the book that is written to me. Oh, Lord, to do thy will. He said, I know that I, they need my help. God said, I heard their cry. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible says, Jesus began to walk in his ministry that he already knew that when he started walking, he would come here to die for our sins. Yes, mm. My Lord. My Lord. But he also left it on record that he said, because I go unto the Father, greater work you shall be able to do. Yeah. 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 Look how God took care of us. Uh -huh. Look how God made a way for us. Yeah. So that we would not get weary on this journey. Uh -huh. But God said, what you're going to need is, you're going to need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you a comfort to what you find yourself going through something. The Holy Ghost can minister to your spirit. Yeah. He'll talk to you. Uh -huh. He'll guide you. Uh -huh. He'll lead you. Yeah. Yeah. Until I share return. Uh -huh. I dare you to seek the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. And watch how God begin to minister to you. Even in your dying hour. Uh -huh. Even in your sickness, God begin to talk to you. Uh -huh. yeah. He'll give you peace in the midst of all that you're going through. Yeah. Where the enemy won't be able to come against your mind. I can get rid of three men. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God give you that peace of mind. There's nothing like having peace of mind when you find yourself going through a dilemma. When you find yourself in trial, when God can give you peace in the very midst of your sickness. Give you your peace when you lose a loved one. That's the kind of God that we serve. To have peace. That's why Jesus said, Lord, in the Bible, the book is written to me, oh Lord, to come to do thy will. I think that I thank God that Isaiah wrote it over 700 years ago. When he said, Behold, the virgin should bring forth a child. the sick one, give it sight to the blind. And every time Jesus did a great one, the enemy was plotting to kill him. And every time you go to church, the devil and whole thing about how can I do children and mess up? How can I call away from God? The world don't want you to walk right. The world don't want you to talk right. The world don't want you to live right. But Jesus is on his way back. Soon and very soon. If I knew I wouldn't miss too long. The Lord will walk in an hour when you That's why the Lord When God, when God had already answered what was his purpose was being. Jesus began to orchestrate in the ministry that God gave him. Uh -huh. Some of us the same way some of y'all are, y'all are doing and the enemy is trying to disrupt what already started. But don't worry about the devil. God got him under his feet. Yes, Lord. Good and heal the sick.
when they begin and the Bible says they begin to take a cat of nine tail and begin to hit him and take flesh out of his skin. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. They were trying to destroy the word. Uh -huh. yeah. They were trying to make sure For your sins and my sins. Just for your, your wrong door and my wrong door. Just for your mishaps and my mishap. Just for my sin and your sin. It was nobody but Jesus. Oh, bless his name. The Bible said when they with them, of 72. The Bible said they were to humiliate Jesus. So they want to say, this is the man y'all calling on. This is the man y'all falling behind. This is the man y'all been worshiping. Now look at him. We worship now. We got it now. Go ahead on and worship him. But Jesus had already let it be known in the book of John chapter 12, if I be lifted up, I will draw all the hands unto me. White man may come. Black man may come.
If you want to be saved, you can just raise your hand. I'm going to turn it over to the pastor. Even if you know you're sick. And you know you're sick. And you've been crying.